back, and uh, boy, Marty, Marty, unlike uh, unlike many other Hitchcock movies, is a very polarizing film. You either really, really like Marty, or you really, really don't like Marty. And um, for me, there was enough there. There was enough there with the, the performances, with the visuals, you know, with the music, with the the mood, with the story, and the overall Hitchcockiness. That's my new favorite word. I used it last week too. That uh, you know, for me, it, it, uh, I like Marnie. Overall, I, I stop short of calling it a, a Hitchcock classic. And, and certainly, if I quickly list my, my favorite Hitchcock films, this ain't on it. But uh, whether you liked it or whether you didn't like it, critics really hated it at the time, and audiences did not flock to see Marnie like they did The Birds or Psycho. And so, bringing to the end uh, an unprecedented level of success that Alfred Hitchcock experienced with the birds going backwards psycho and going backwards to North by Northwest. I'm sure he didn't need the money anymore and I think he was uh, pretty disappointed with, with how this, uh, this sort of turned out. And the, the thought is, is that at the time audiences just really weren't interested in this, the, the psychological mumbo jumbo that this, this movie uh, had. Now I don't know about that, I wasn't there in 1964 to watch it. Maybe you were, and you can you can comment. Remember, audiences weren't into Vertigo either, and that since became a, a, a classic. Um, but I can tell you what audiences were watching in 1964. The the highest grossing films of 1964 were My Fair Lady and Mary Poppins. I mean, these two movies made a huge amount of money. You know, you've seen both of them: My Fair Lady with Rex Harrison and Audrey Hepburn, and Mary Poppins with Julie Andrews. Also in the top ten of, of highest grossing pictures uh, is an Elvis movie, a Beatles movie, two Pink Panther movies, two James Bond movies, both starring Sean Connery. Uh, none of these films, although they're all great, require a lot of cere cerebral input by the audience. I mean, uh, we've, I've seen all those movies uh, many, many times. And uh, maybe that's kind of what's going on. President Kennedy had been assassinated in, in the fall of 1963, and maybe we're, we're just not in the mood for anything serious in 1964. Who knows? Well, what did we, what, what did we like about Marnie? Well, we certainly liked the, the like I said, the Hitchcockiness of it, the, the suspense, the scene where Marnie is stealing the money. That was well done. The, the, you can see the big crane shot coming in when the party is happening and it's, it's, you know, it's focusing on the door and there's, there's strut and that's fun. And, and certainly, you know, again, there's just something eerily watchable about Tippi Hedren for me. And, um, you know, what a great performance by Sean Connery. He's awesome. Uh, we both love Sean Connery. Uh, it's my favorite James Bond. It's her second favorite James Bond. Well, is it? Doesn't matter. We'll do a James Bond blog one of these years. Uh, great entrance by Sean Connery when he, he comes in and, and uh, he, he, the lines he gets to say, I'm, I'm, what is it, I'm, I'm fighting a powerful impulse to, to beat the hell out of you right now. Not exactly James Bond, but definitely Sean Connery. And uh, you know, he's great because it, it's, it's playing against type. He's not James Bond. He, he gets a little uh, Scotty from Vertigo on us a little bit there with, with trapping Marty, by God I'm going to keep you. And uh, he comes around in the end, and in the end, we both agree when the movie ends, we realize that he, he does love Marty, and he, he wants her to get better, he wants to be with her. So, we love that, and, and you know, another great entrance by Tippi Hedren, what a great way to make an entrance in a movie, washing away the, 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 the sins in the, in the, in the sink, and, and emerging as this beautiful blonde woman. Uh, and a very difficult role, you know, you don't have to like Tippi Hedren, but I don't know a lot of actresses at the time that could have, could have, pulled this off, I don't know, that, that could have pulled this off. So when Hitchcock was making it, he really felt that she was delivering an Academy Award performance in it, and whether she was or not is anyone's guess. Um, this is the moment that they have their falling out, and uh, it's, it's probably none of our business, but uh, you know, I, I think there's going to be a BBC show coming up uh, in, the, in the next few years, 2012, 2013, that is, is about Tippi Hedren and Hitchcock, but uh, she was great, and you know, it's, it's, just, it's just something watchable about Tippi Hedren, so um, she doesn't work with Hitchcock again. We also saw Mariette Hartley in that, which is neat. I remember her from those Polaroid commercials she did with James Garner. She was also in an episode of Star Trek original episode. Uh, that was Bruce Dern in uh, the, the sailor guy who, who the little, little Marnie girl ends up uh, killing. That was quite a scene. And you'll see Bruce Dern again 
12 years from now in Alfred Hitchcock's final movie, Family Plot. He stars in it. And uh, the, by the way, the little girl playing Marnie, that was Melody Thomas Scott, who as soon as I said her name, Diane said, oh, she was in, what was she in? Young and the Restless. Young and the Restless. So anyways, that's kind of fun. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're, we, we like Marnie. That was, that was good. Um, but this is, this is a big fond farewell now to, to Robert Burks. Robert Burks ends up uh, not working with Albert Hitchcock again because he, he passes away in a, in a house fire with his, with his wife. And, uh, you know, if you want to know what life without Robert Burks is, you know, the next four movies you'll, you'll see. And uh, we, we've had Robert Burks since, since Strangers, Strangers on a Train. The only thing we didn't see him in was, was doing the cinematography for was Psycho. Uh, George Tomasini, well, he, he dies of a heart attack uh, after uh, Marty. Not probably not because of the movie, but uh, you know. And again, if you want to see what when his editing is missed, we'll we'll see it next week. This is the last musical score used by Alfred Hitchcock by Bernard Herrmann, and I loved it. I mean, it, it shades of vertigo. You're always going to get that, but uh, very very good. And uh, they have a falling out during next week's movie, Torn Curtain and they never worked together, and, and his music that he did write for Torn Curtain isn't used in Torn Curtain. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. And um, yes, The Last Hitchcock Blonde. This is farewell to, to that. In the next four movies, there really isn't a central character, a strong, icy, strong lead, lead woman. So, uh, very good. So, we did see Brandy in this movie twice. And, uh, you know, not a, not a violent movie, not a, a lot of violence in this one. And uh, and there you go. So we'll get it. We're, we're, we're ready to move on. Um, but we did want to talk about what, what did win Best Picture. And it is actually My Fair Lady with when Rex Harrison wins Best Actor. Not Sean Connery for Goldfinger. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, that's, that's a great movie. We remember watching the, the precursor of that, which is called Pygmalion. And uh, we mentioned it way back when, when we were reviewing movies from that year. If you liked My Fair Lady, and it's a delight, Pygmalion is better. It's excellent. It's not a musical. It's, no, it isn't. And uh, I forgot. And it's, it's really, really good. It's the original of this. So, uh, so good. And if you want to watch a great movie from 1964, Hard Day's Night. Or Viva Las Vegas. I mean, really. It's a, or the two Pink Panther movies. So, uh, so there really is uh, a lot to see. So uh, good. So that's it for us. You were going to talk about the right scene. Oh, I did. I did want to talk about that. The fact that uh, this movie was written by a woman is, is very interesting. In fact, uh, the, the woman who wrote Marty, you can watch her on the, the DVD extras on this. And uh, the, the fellow Evan Hunter, who was writing it, was fired. He didn't want to write the rape scene. He did. And he wrote it the way Hitch wanted it, and he wrote it the way he thought it would be better. And he submitted both, and he was fired for his efforts. And uh, the, the woman who wrote it, Jay Preston, she... Jay Preston, I forget already. Uh, she, uh, you know, she didn't have a single problem with it, and, and it's a very interesting perspective, um, you know, and it's it's intriguing in that regard. Uh, I, I, I think it would have been nice if Albert Hitchcock could have done more movies with uh, with a woman writing it. It's it's always going to be different. There uh, there just weren't a lot of women screenwriters in Hollywood. Anyways, good. So we're we're done with uh, 1964. So we look forward to next week's movie from 1966, Torn Curtain. And um, we're enjoying the comments. We're enjoying the new viewers that are uh, signing up and coming aboard. And so we're we're winding down. But uh, we've got some good movies to look forward to. We've got Paul Newman to look forward to. And uh, so good. So we'll, we'll see you next week. So from our couch to yours, we will see you then.